PowerPoint, we're going to talk about covalent bonds, um, which can form between two atoms, and then briefly talk about hydrogen bonds as well. Covalent bonds are different than ionic bonds, where electrons are gained or lost. In a covalent bond, electrons are shared. So the electrons spend some time around one atom, and they spend some of their time around the second atom. So they rotate around both atoms. Um, an example of a covalent bond is hydrogen. And again, the reason why these covalent bonds are forming is to try to create a full outer shell for both atoms because that's what makes them most stable. Um, covalent bonds typically form between atoms that have similar electronegativities. So they're going to have an equal pull on the electrons, which is why they spend the um, time around both atoms. And Covalent bonds are really important in biology. Um, all the organic compounds that we're going to learn about are held together with covalent bonds, mostly. Um, and so, some really important atoms that form covalent bonds are oxygen and carbon um, and phosphorus and nitrogen. So we'll see some examples of that in upcoming presentations. There are different types of covalent bonds. The simplest is just a single covalent bond. So you can see that Carbon has four electrons in its outer shell. It would like to have eight. That's going to make it the most stable. Hydrogen only has one electron in its outer shell. And again, it would like to have two, so it can be the most stable. So what happens is that hydrogen joins with carbon, and they're going to share two electrons, show, forming methane gas, or CH, CH4. So here, the, each hydrogen now has two electrons because it's sharing with a carbon, and the carbon has eight electrons in its outer shell, so it's also happy and stable. So a single covalent bond shares two electrons. In a double covalent bond, um, two pairs of electrons, or four electrons total, are shared, and O2 gas is held together with a double covalent bond. So oxygen has six electrons, in its outer shell, again, it would rather have eight. So it can share four electrons, as shown here. And these four electrons spend some time around each oxygen atom. So in reality, each oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons, forming a double covalent bond and making the, a stable molecule of oxygen. You can also form a triple covalent bond. In a triple covalent bond, guess how many electrons we're sharing? Six or three pairs. Nitrogen gas is a great example of a triple covalent bond. Um, nitrogen has five electrons in its outer shell. It would like to have eight for a full outer shell. So it's going to share six that will spend some time rotating around each individual atom, putting in six shared and then two for a total of eight. We can divide covalent bonds into two different groups. The first group is called non-polyvalent bonds. These form when two atoms that are identical come together to make a covalent bond. The electrons are shared equally because the two atoms have identical electronegativities. Another way to think about it is that they have the same number of protons um, in the nuclei, so they're going to be attracted, the electrons will be attracted equally to both um, nuclei. So here we have oxygen gas. This is a nonpolar covalent bond. Each oxygen has um, eight electrons, sorry, eight protons in the nucleus. So these electrons are going to be attracted to the, these eight protons, but they're going to be equally attracted to these eight protons, and they're going to spend an equal amount of time rotating around both atoms. This is not true, however, if we have two atoms of um, different elements. So let's take a look at that. And these are called polar covalent bonds. These form between atoms of different elements. So they have different number of protons, and as a result, different electronegativities. Electrons always spend more time near the nucleus with more protons. That should make sense because they are going to be more attracted to the area of the molecule that has more of a positive charge. I'm not saying that they never rotate 
around the other atoms, but they just spend the majority of their time around one specific atom. Okay? The entire molecule, however, is not charged, so we're not creating ions here. We're just making a partial charge, so um, one area of the molecule is slightly positive and one area is slightly negative, which I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so water is a great example of a polar covalent bond. Water is H2O, two hydrogen, one um, oxygen. We have two single covalent bonds, and hydrogen only has one proton, so the electrons aren't super attracted to the one proton that hydrogen has. Oxygen has eight protons. That's a lot more positives. So the electrons spend a lot of time rotating around the oxygen atom, and every once in a while they go down to the hydrogen, but then they come up and spend more time around the, the oxygen nucleus because it has so much positive charge in there. So since the electrons are up at this end uh, more frequently, the oxygen end has a slightly negative charge, and then the hydrogen end has a slightly positive charge because the electrons aren't hanging out there as frequently. So we can say that the molecule has two poles or two different ends with different slight charges. Um, and that's you can compare that to the poles of the Earth, the North and the South Pole being the two ends of the Earth. So we have a negative pole and a positive pole on this molecule. Hydrogen bonds can form as a result of creating polar multiple Water, we again, that the oxygen end is slightly negative and the hydrogen end is slightly positive because we're not an ionic bonds, bonds working together with lots of hydrogen bonds. Um, so they're very important bonds, but they're only due to attraction between a positive end of one molecule and a negative end of another polar covalent molecule.